so today, guys, we are answering the question in this series called Real Answers, is porn or is pornography really a big deal? You know, sometimes people ask that question, is it really a big deal? And as I was, you know, approaching this subject, I kept wanting to put it off, you know, because in, in the church, this is something that often we feel uncomfortable talking about. And I'm like, oh man, anything but that. But the Lord has confirmed and made it very clear that this is where we are to head because people's lives are at stake. You know, this week I was uh, scrolling online and I saw this news headline that pops up. It says, local man, 22 years old, arrested for possession of child pornography. And you know, my heart just broke because although I'm looking in the comment section and people are like, throw him off a cliff, you know, kill him, he deserves to die and all these things. But my heart broke because I was thinking, what got that guy to that point? You know, where did all of this start? And I started thinking about his life at 22 years old. You know, I have a child that's 22, year old, 22 years old. And I'm thinking, this young man has ruined his life. He has completely wrecked his life because of this thing called pornography. You know, what he can expect in his future is that he's going to spend time in jail or in prison with hardened criminals. What he can expect is that he's going to have the label slapped on him that he will have to wear the rest of his life and, and, it's, and the, the label is that he's a sex offender. The next thing that he has to do is that he's going to have a felony on his record and probably multiple charges, which is going to make it nearly impossible to get a job or a good playing job. And all because of this decision to go down this rabbit hole of pornography. And I feel that it's something that we need to talk about because our culture and this generation is just being swallowed up with pornography. And I'm not just talking about websites and things that they're viewing, but it's also the music that they're listening to. Parents, I want to challenge you. You need to be aware of what your kids are listening to these days. The enemy is infiltrating from all different angles, from cable, from cartoons. I mean, everything, anime. We're, we're seeing that the enemy is just on the prowl. He is on, on just full attack mode. And we have a lot of parents and even adults, we are asleep to this. And see, we see it happening around the world and we expect that to happen. But I want you to know that pornography has become a cancer within the walls of the church. I'm not specifically speaking of Hub City Church. I'm saying the church in general. That it is a cancer in the church in America. And it is the elephant that is in the room that people don't want to talk about. It's uncomfortable. We don't want to hit this thing head on. But I'm telling you today, I'm going to be bold. I'm telling you, I've come with courage and I've come with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because people's lives are at stake. I'm telling you that families are on on the cusp and they're on the brink of destruction and falling apart because people are engaging in this kind of behavior. They're trapped. They're isolated. They're doing things in secret. They're telling lies. They're covering their tracks. They are not living in truth. And I would imagine that some of you that are hearing my voice today, you know that the Holy Spirit is convicting you right now because, you know, you know that you've been off base. You know that you've been doing your own thing. And God has sent me today as a warning to you that you're walking on thin ice and it's time to get right with God. It's time to consecrate yourself to the Lord. It's time to get rid of those lustful behaviors and actions. And I want you to know this, that God's grace is going to empower you to get free. My question to you today is, do you want to be free? See, this is a church issue that I want to deal with. Because see, some people aren't convinced that it's that bad of a deal. But let me give you some of the latest statistics. See, 76% of people, and I'm talking Christians, 76% of those that are 18 to 24 years old, listen, these are Christians, they're actively seeking out porn on a weekly basis. 76% are, guys, do you understand that that's eight out of 10 people almost of young people are actively seeking out pornography? Christians, not the world, Christians, come on. 68% of church going men view porn on a regular basis. 68%, that means that almost seven out of 10, lying 10 Christians up that you know, and seven of them are regularly checking in on websites monthly. 33% of women aged 25 and under search for porn at least once a month. Christian women, 
33%. And this is a staggering statistic here, is that 11 years old is the age that a child is first exposed to porn. That's the average age, 11 years old. And 94% of children will see porn by the age 14. This is not something that we can be on our heels on. This is not something that we can be sitting on our hands and just, you know, hoping for the sweet by and by and just, you know, hoping that it all goes away. This is reality that our children, our generations, our family, our men, our women, our young adults, they are under attack. And somebody needs to rise up and just start speaking truth. And, and I, hey, I'm grabbing the mantle today. And I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach a hard word today. This is not a subject that I was excited to, to bring, you know, because, oh, man, you know, it, you know people are going to love it. People are going to be excited about it. Listen, I am excited to preach this word today because I know that lives are going to be changed. Some of you, you are under the bondage. It's like the, the hook went in your mouth really smooth, but it doesn't come out. And you are feeling the pressure. You are depressed. You are living a life full of secrets and darkness. And I want you to know that today that God is going to bring you into the light, my friend, that you are going to experience freedom, that God is going to start the process of making you whole once again. This is good news. But we have to be willing to hit this thing head on. Do you know that 71% of teens hide their online behavior from their parents? So seven out of 10 kids are doing things that the parents are clueless, you know, about. We need to move into a place where our children can feel that it's okay to be truthful with us. And my hope today is that this conversation, this message is actually going to open up dialect. It's going to open up honest conversation between mom and dad and teenagers. And that there can be some healing and mending there. That they feel that their parents are undergirding them and that their parents have not given up on them. Their parents are not going to heap shame on them, but they're going to link arms and we're all going to move forward together into all that God has for us. There's another staggering statistic and it's this. With all this being said, that nearly eight out of 10 men are struggling. Nearly seven out of, you know, seven out of 10 young people are struggling with this. That only 7% of pastors say their church has a program to help people struggling with pornography. So here we have this epidemic in the American church that is just running wild, destroying things. And only 7% of our churches even have anything to help people. And I want you to know today I'm declaring and we are planting a flag at Hub City Church that if you are struggling with pornography, that we are here to help. We talked last week about having those support runners. I want you to know that we will be your support runner. That we are in the midst of developing programs and things to help you walk through and find freedom. And so... Understand, like I said, the flag has been planted. But why is pornography, when we, when we ask the question, is it really a big deal? Here's why it's a big deal. It's because pornography wounds people. It wounds people. And the greatest wound that people feel and they experience is that it steals your innocence. It steals your innocence. See, when you're young, you get into this and it's maybe out of curiosity. Maybe a friend exposed you to it. Maybe a family member exposed you to it. But as soon as it happens, the images are burned in your brain and you can't get out. And there's, the, there's your innocence is robbed from you. It's taken from you. You can't go back to where you were before that actually happened. And what it does is it actually it warps your view of sexuality and it damages your ability to have true intimacy. What pornography does and when it steals your innocence is that it exposes you to unnatural things and it distorts your sense of reality. So you're seeing things that you think are real, but it's really not real. And then you try to take the things, those unnatural things into the real world and it doesn't work. It also, it causes men to objectify women. It distorts your view of women. And instead of seeing them as people that have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God, people that are the apple of his eye, women that, that, that are made in God's image, they become nothing more than objects that are meant to gratify us and to bring pleasure through this eye gate. And I want you to know today that women are much more than that. 
But when our innocence is stolen, it leads us down a path to misusing and abusing. It also, it's developed a generation of people who are physically available, but emotionally unavailable. See, we wonder why marriages have failed. We wonder why the rates are just as high in the church as they are in the world. The reason is, is because we have these people that, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll just include myself and everybody else around. If we have bought into that, what it does is it destroys our ability to be emotionally available. So you are a three-part being. You are physical, you're emotional, you know, your soul, and then also you're, you're a spirit being. And when your soul is damaged because pornography destroys and damages your soul, you can't bring that completeness, that wholeness into a relationship. And that's where that brokenness is. And there's a, a statistic that men that view pornography have a 300% chance or 300% more chance to engage in infidelity than men who do not engage in pornography. See, there's a brokenness that happens when we do this. It wounds you. It hurts your soul. So where does all this, you know, where did all this start? Where did all this begin? I want to take you back into the beginning of the Bible, into Genesis chapter 3. And I want to unpack a couple things that help us understand some principles when it comes to pornography and how we're going to overcome this. So in Genesis chapter three, verse one, it says this. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So I want you to see this, that Eve of no fault of her own, she's in the garden, you know, that God created and it was amazing. And of no fault of her own, the enemy comes to her. The serpent comes to her. And see, when it comes to pornography, you don't need to make your way to the enemy. The enemy is going to come to you. And in in the life that, in the culture that we live in, it's coming through music. It's coming through movies. It's coming through books. It's coming through magazines. It's coming through websites. You, You don't have to go find it. It's going to come to you. And when it comes to you, you have to have a plan on how you are going to handle this. And see, what what I want to encourage you and what I want to equip you with today is the fact that you cannot fight this battle in the flesh. This is a spiritual battle. Listen to what 1 Timothy 4, 1 says. It says, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Ephesians 6, 12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So when you're being tempted with pornography, when you're being held captive by pornography, you have to understand that you are are really being confronted with seducing spirits. They're wanting to seduce you and draw you away from the things of God. They're wanting to pull you away from the goodness and the glory of God. They're wanting you to engage in wickedness. They're wanting you to basically partner with them. And you know what? It, it, it drives me crazy because sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, I'll just muster up enough self-control. But I want you to know that you need to attack the spirit with spirit. And you need God's grace to move on your behalf. You need to invite him into your situation. You need the power of God to break you free, to break you loose. And too often we forget this. And we don't invite God into this and we find ourselves being seduced and pulled away. And people believe the lies just as the enemy, as that serpent went into that garden, he started telling her lies. He started telling her half truths. And I've listened to couples and they've said, you know, we engage in in watching pornography together because it just spices up our relationship. Can I be honest with you? If you are participating in that, I'm going to love you enough right now to tell you the truth, that you are engaging in deception from seducing spirits. That is not God's best for you. God is not involved in that. And you need to knock that stuff off right now. I'm just telling you. I listen to people often say, oh, well, you know, it's just natural. It's just natural, you know. It's just a body. I'm just looking at bodies, just body parts. They got parts that I have. And listen, that's a seducing spirit drawing you away. 
And you are partnering with deception. You are partnering with lies. You are partnering with wickedness, my friend. As you see all throughout the Bible, there are so many stories of people engaging in sexual activity outside the guidelines that God has established. And I'm telling you today that if you are doing that, you're actually blocking the blessings of God on your life. You're creating a separation. I've talked to men, you know, as I've mentored, you know, probably five, 600 men in my last 17 years. And most of them, they will, they will say this. I feel an emptiness when I'm engaged in this. And even though I'm involved in Christian activities, I've never felt further from God. We have to make a choice. Are we going to listen to those spirits that are seducing us? Those wicked spirits that you can't see? I'm telling you guys, there's a realm that you can't see, but it is real. And it has waged an all-out war and attack on you and your children and on our cities and on our states and on our nation. And it's up to us that have the, the clarity and the understanding of that to rise up and to fight. We need to say, no more. No more. As we continue in this story, Adam and Eve, they end up giving in. They end up eating this fruit from this forbidden tree. And it says that their eyes are opened. Once again, their innocence is stolen. See, before that, all they knew was the goodness of God. Everything was in perfect harmony. Everything made sense. They were at complete and total peace. They lacked nothing. But the enemy deceived them and got them to focus on what they didn't have. And he will do the same to you and I. And as we focus on that, and if we start to partake in the things that he's tempting us with, what we will find is that he will draw you away and your eyes will be opened and your innocence will be stolen. And that is not God's plan. God wants you to have a pure heart. God wants you to have a pure mind. God wants you to have pure motives. And the enemy is constantly going to come, un, he's going to constantly come to attack you in that area. And what we see is that in verse 8, I want to read this to you. This is Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. After their eyes were opened, their innocence is stolen. And it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Here's the consequence of us listening to seducing spirits. This is the consequence of us giving in and seeking comfort from anything other than the presence of God and yielding ourselves to this deception and yielding ourselves to this wickedness. What ends up happening is shame comes upon you. See, before that, Adam and Eve, they had no shame at all. But once they sinned, it was that shame and fear came upon them. And shame is a chain, my friends. It's a heavy chain. And what it does is it traps you in a cycle of defeat. Traps you in a cycle of defeat. You know, shame, shame, shame. Why? Because what it does is it leads you down a path of keeping secrets, telling lies, and covering your tracks. See, that is not freedom. It's not freedom when you feel that you have to cover everything you're doing. You're, you're, you're hiding your, your search history. You're covering your tracks. You know, you're pretending. You're wearing a mask. You know that you're doing things behind closed doors in secret that you would be ashamed of if people were to find out. That is not living life and life more abundantly, my friend. That is living a life where the enemy is stealing from you, he's killing you, and he's destroying you. And it's time that we become aware of his devices. It's time that we, come, we become aware of his tricks and his deception. And it's time that we learn to get that chain of shame off of our neck because it's stealing your confidence. And you know, one of the saddest things that shame will do to you is that it'll remove your ability to look the people that you love the most in the eye. 
It'll always cause you to look down because you're hiding something. And you will never be able to truly engage in true intimacy with those that you love because there's always a wall there. There's always something there. They can feel it. They may not know what it is, but they can feel it. And it's time that our eyes are open to this, that we are no longer yielding ourselves to that deception, to those seducing spirits, because it's stealing from you, my friend. And I care and God cares that you get free today. I want to talk about four things that are going to allow you to step into a place of freedom. I want to talk about four things that you can do to reclaim your innocence. Four practical things that are going to set you up for success. But before I get into that, I want to talk to those of you that are men over your homes. I just feel a really strong challenge right now to say this to you. Some of you are walking on thin ice right now. And God has sent me here to warn you today. This is not cool. This is not comfortable for me to do this. But I'm willing to make a spectacle of myself. I'm willing to make a fool of myself for your sake and for your family's sake. And some of you, like I said, you are treading in deep waters right now. Some of you, you're walking on thin ice. Some of you, you are playing with matches and you are risking burning down your whole house today. And God has sent me as a warning to you to challenge you to say, you have got to get help. You have got to get free. You have to get healthy. You have to get whole today. You've got to kick this process off by saying, you know what? I am done with where I was and being willing to move forward and to stop this nonsense that's been going on. God has sent me today to call you out to call you out, not call you out like pointing a finger at your chest, calling you out of where you are, calling you out of hiding, calling you out of that place of shame. Come on, God has so much more for you. Wouldn't it be great to not have to lie anymore? Wouldn't it be great to not have to live in secret? Wouldn't it be great to not feel that pressure of of covering your tracks and just being at total peace that wherever you are, you just get to be yourself. I hope that today you feel that, man, like, I want to respond to that. That's who I want to be. You're tired. You're worn out. I'm talking to those of you that are young, too, you young people. Listen, don't start your life out by making those kind of decisions to where the rest of your life, you always have to cover your tracks. It's going to wear you out. You got to come clean today. You got to be real. And so I'm going to give you four quick things here. One is that you need to confess to God. Listen to what Psalm 32, 5 says. It says, finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And you forgave me. And my guilt is gone. Come on, guys. We, we have to come before the Lord and we need to just repent. If you've been doing this, the first step is just coming before God and saying, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. And God, I ask you that you would forgive me. And God, I ask that you give me a fresh start today. God, I'm asking you to let me start all over today. And I want to experience your presence, God. I'm tired of feeling separated from you. I'm tired of feeling like there's a block or a wall between us, that there's some kind of separation. And I'm going to tell you this, as you confess to God, that wall will instantly be removed. And you are going to feel his pleasure. You are going to feel his embrace today. Come on. Number two is that you need to confess to the right people. I always say this. You can't tell everybody everything, but you can tell somebody something. You've got to get good people around you that are moving in the same direction and that are willing to hold you accountable. Listen to James 5.16. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So when you confess to God, you're going to experience forgiveness. And when you confess to others, you're going to experience healing. And healing is what you need because you're wounded. You have the wound because your innocence has been stolen. And God is wanting to restore you in that area. He's wanting to restore your innocence. He's wanting to wash your mind according to his word and renew your mind. 
He's wanting you to think different. He wants to remove and burn those images out of your mind and give you a mind that is innocent once again, that the perversion is removed, that you don't see everything through a perverted joke. You don't see everything through, you know, through the lens of perversion. God is going to restore you today. But it happens through being healed and you got to confess. You have to get into a place of accountability. Be willing to. In 2 Timothy 2, it says this, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So what he's saying is, hey, you got to get others around you. I love that part where he says, with those And so he's saying, you got to get some good people around you. Come on. You guys got to work together. Last week, we talked about having some support runners. Well, I'm going to tell you here at Hub City, we want to be your support runners as you walk through this. And we're putting our money where our mouth is. In two weeks, September 13th, we are kicking off freedom groups. And I'm going to tell you, I don't care if you're young. I I don't care if you're old. If you're a teenager and you're battling this, do not battle it alone. You need to have a place where you can work through this process with people. And listen, we are not hacking at leaves or at fruit. We are getting down to the root issues and root causes of all this. It's not just a class for, you know, pornography. It's a class with dealing with deep-seated issues. But I'm telling you, if you need help walking this process, you need to go to hubcitychurch.live as soon as church is over, and you need to click on that, that icon for Freedom Groups and get signed up. And like I said, if you are a teen and you need help, we are going to make groups. We're going to do whatever it takes to ensure that you have a process to walk through into freedom and into victory. Come on. Number three is that you got to remove triggers. In Matthew 5, 27 through 30, Jesus, um, he basically says this. He says, you shall not commit adultery. He says, but I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Then he goes on to talk about, hey, if, you're, if your eye's causing you to sin, he says, pluck it out. He's saying, if your right hand is causing you sin, he says, cut it off. Because he says, it's better for you to lose this part than to lose your whole self into hell. And so my point here is what, he, what I believe he's saying to us is that you got to cut off whatever is causing the issue. You know, you have to be serious about overcoming this issue of pornography And and you have to be willing to do whatever it takes. I remember I had a friend who was trying to battle through this and he said, you know what? He goes, I have an app that anytime I search, if I search anything that's questionable, it's gonna send you an email. Guys, that, that's somebody that's willing to do whatever it takes to get free. Some of you, you're going to have to get rid of cable. Some of you are going to have to cancel some of those magazine subscriptions. Some of you, you're going to have to go back to a flip phone. <laughs> I know some of you go, oh man, do they even make those? But my point is that you've got to be desperate. This is Jesus saying right here, hey, you've got to be willing to take some drastic measures in order to get free. And the question is, is how bad do you really want to be free? I've talked to guys before and everything that I suggested, they're like, yeah, but I have to do this. And oh, and I have to do this. And I would just think they're not ready. They're not ready. And they would stay stuck. But every once in a while, I'd run across somebody that was just sold out and their family meant so much and their kids meant so much. They were like, I am willing and ready to do anything. Just tell me what to do and we're gonna do this. And you walk through with them in that that process of accountability and my goodness. They're free. And the last one is this. Number four is you have to let the goodness of God heal your wound. This is huge. It says that the kindness of the Lord leads us to repentance. But listen to what Luke 5, 12, 13 says. It says, and it happened when he was in a certain city. This is speaking of Jesus. That behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus And he fell on his face and implored him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand. This is Jesus. He put out his hand and he touched him saying, I'm willing. Be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him. See, what you have to understand is that when you had leprosy in those days, you were relegated to living out on the fringes. These people were marginalized. They were overlooked. They were, you know, the scum of the earth. They were the people that nobody wanted to touch. Nobody wanted to be in their presence. 
and it was a death sentence to have leprosy. And they were supposed to stay on the outside. But see, you see this guy, he pressed in. He was in a place that he wasn't even supposed to be in. And also what lepers had to do is whenever they were around, they would have to yell, unclean, unclean, if they saw anybody. They would have to identify themselves as unclean. And not only did Jesus allow him to come into his presence, Jesus was willing to touch him. And I want to I want to talk to those of you today, young and old, men and women, boys and girls. If you've been involved in pornography and you feel shame and you feel separated from God, and you feel like you've been living in secret, you've been hiding out, you've been covering your tracks. I want you to know that today Jesus is saying, come to me. I want to touch you. I want to heal you. I want to cleanse you. I want to make you whole once again. You don't need to hide. You don't need to be in shame. I'm going to remove all of that from you today. Today is the day of a clean break. Today is a day of a do-over. Today is a day of starting over. In his presence. And he's drawing you to him. If you're here today and you're hearing my words, you're saying, Pastor Steve, you're speaking to me and I need to get free. I want to pray over you right now. Would you just bow your heads, guys, right where you're at? I believe that God's going to break some chains right now. I believe that God's going to set some of you free. The bondage that you've been living in for years. Let's pray. Jesus, we come before you right now. We acknowledge that we desperately need you in this moment. And Jesus, I thank you that you've always been the God that is more than willing to cleanse and to heal and to restore. And so right now, God, we just pray for those that are living under the grip of pornography, God. They've tried to quit over and over and over to no avail, no success. God, I pray that today would be their day of breakthrough. Sudden and dramatic advance in their life. God, I pray that those that that feel shame and they feel dirty, God, may you wash them clean right now in this moment. God, I pray that you would burn those memories and those images out of their minds right now by your Holy Spirit. Your word says that you're an all-consuming fire. And so God, right now, we ask that you would eradicate those memories. Take all of that out of their mind and give them the mind of Christ. So God, we trust you right now with all that we are. We're asking you to do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.